Well, let's bring in Jenna Clark, Associate Editor of The Australian Now, to discuss the news of the day. Uh, my God, it was a hell of a day in Parliament. Your response? Mm. Yeah, Caleb, look, following on from your really strong editorial there, I think what we saw in uh, question time, especially today and all throughout the, the House of Reps there, was complete and utter political and policy capitulation by the government to the coalition. And I think it's only made all the more toxic with the fact that we're now seeing, you know, images beamed in from the Prime Minister touching down <coughs> on another overseas trip to talk about things <coughs> like AI. So I think it's, it's going to be a very interesting weekend to see what the weekend papers have to say, specifically in my own newspaper by my colleague. Paul Kelly and Dennis Shanahan, but I think this could be very, very sticky for the government moving forward. And some great reporting by the West Australian on this story earlier this week. Indeed, and uh, we'll talk to a reporter from the West Australian about uh, what he's been seeing later in the show. Um, and it, it's just extraordinary how fast the government changed its tune today when it came to those amendments mm -hmm. from the government. But uh, I have to say, Richard Miles looked every bit the Prime Minister, uh, even though he's acting in the role, when he stood up in question time and said this is the right thing to do. Might have been a bit late, but uh, he showed some leadership. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I think Mr Miles always conducts himself incredibly well, uh, whether it be in media conferences or even on the floor. He's very measured. He's very calm. He has a really wry sense of humour. Uh, and there's, you know, there's never any, you know, niggle across the chamber. So, look, I think he really uh, he really showed himself up. And the fact that, you know, Jim Chalmers uh, may have some competition when it <laughs> comes to potentially the next, uh, the next leader. Yes, indeed. Now, an ABC radio presenter quit live on air yesterday. He, he said he was sick of receiving penalties for speaking bluntly. Uh, Josh Zepps made the shock announcement on ABC Radio Sydney Afternoons. Take a listen. Having truly rational, bullshit-free conversations about controversial issues is risky these days. The penalties for speaking bluntly, the penalties for trying to coax people out of their thought silos and their echo chambers are very high. You know that I don't do bullshit. I'm a bit of a straight shooter. The bottom line is, I'm a bit too spicy for this gig. It's an extraordinary <laughs> admission, uh, not just about himself. And I have to say, Josh Zepps uh, would be among the best broadcasters the ABC has because he mm. does open up discussions uh, from all angles and he's very much uh, committed to mm. that. But apparently the ABC is not all on board with that. Yeah, look, full credit to the bloke for... I mean, it's a pretty plum role if you hand over a radio gig, especially on a metro station. It's a pretty plum gig, and to hand it over, I mean, full credit to him. They did it live on air, look, threw in a couple of spicy words, as he said. And I find it really interesting when you kind of delve a bit deeper into, into Josh. He did present afternoons in Sydney. He always had really fascinating takes, and I think what I really enjoyed about him as a broadcaster and what I will continue to enjoy when he moves into his podcast world is the fact that you never really know where he's going to land on a subject, and I find that really... like. He's a, like a palate cleanser for opinion in this country. So I think it, it's great that uh, the fact that, you know, he's put it out there and said, I don't want any more uh, bulldust. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he does next and see how the ABC responds and who they put in the chair to replace him. Yeah, well, we know what the ABC's ratings are looking like, particularly in radio at the moment. Who would have thought that uh, if you move away from diversity of thought, that it doesn't translate to listeners? You, you can't just chase one market as they seem to do, particularly when that market is turning off. Um, now, uh, concerning news today, a new report from the Royal Australian College of GPs has found that almost a third of all general practitioners in Australia intend to retire, quote-unquote, in the next five years. So you, you've got not enough medical students interested in becoming GPs. Um, you know, they're going off to uh, specialties instead because there's more money to be made there. Uh, bulk billing is, is in decline. Medicare is in trouble. And then you've got all these other doctors saying that their uh, workloads are intensifying. They're dealing with burnout. It's difficult to see patients. Uh, and then you add on top of that, at the moment, the state governments are all trying to levy payroll tax on GP clinics. Why would you want to be a doctor? 
Exactly. This is a really alarming report. And considering that what we're hearing is, I, I think when you when we speak about burnout now in the sense of, you know, workplaces, I think when it comes from the medical profession, we should really stand up and pay attention. And the fact that the healthcare systems around the country, no state government or territory government is covering themselves in glory when it comes to health at this point in time. So I think it's really <coughs> alarming the fact that these uh, GPs now are saying, you know, 38% of our, of our appointments now are concerned about mental health. Mm. And that isn't just a standard consult. That's not just oh, here's, you know, some antibiotics for a cough. That's a really in-depth discussion you need to have. So I think the issue is, I think for so long, when you speak to a number of people in the medical profession, GP has sort of been seen as the arts degree of that sort of realm. So mm. I think, especially when it comes to regional Australia, general practitioners are, you know, worth their weight in gold to country towns. So I think the government definitely has to act on this. Maybe not at a federal level, but definitely at a state level. Yeah, well, they have to pull their finger out because if people can't go to a GP, uh, where are they going to go? They're going to go to the hospital. Hospitals, and we know the hospitals are already is, at, yeah, at breaking be in point. Tri yeah, exactly. Or they'll be uh, they'll be parked up in the back of an ambulance for five hours around the country. Indeed. Now, parents at an eleven thousand dollar a year Catholic school in New South Wales are getting uh, all hot and bothered over plans to make students study at home one day a week. So they, they want to apply this to the year 10 to 12 students at Chevalier College. They're going to be invited to learn from home on some Mondays to reduce face-to-face <laughs> -face teaching and encourage professional learning and set students up for success in the uh, modern world, apparently. Um, sounds a bit more like an excuse to get the kids out of the classroom so the teachers don't have to deal with them. And the poor old parents who are trying to hold yeah. down jobs in a cost-of-living crisis yeah. have to deal with them instead. <laughs> What would baby Jesus think? That's all I read when I, uh, all I thought when I read this, this article today. And I think what what is so alarming is that they're so tone deaf with the fact that aren't you noticing the absolute decline in the education standards in this country at this point in time? We are getting dumber. We need more mm. kids in school for probably a little bit longer. And even more alarming, I think, when you look at, you know, what, what we're seeing now with the fact of, you know, what, what's happening in Gaza and the way that students are sort of reacting to, the, to those situations, we need to be focusing on, you know, what anti-Semitism is is, you know, focusing on world history and, and, again, as we saw during the voice referendum, also our very own Australian and mm. Indigenous history. So more time in classrooms, maybe. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, now, quickly before we go, Jenna, uh, the, the alcoholic drink, Hard Solo, they've got to change their name now to Hard Rated after the Alcoholic Beverages <laughs> Advertising Code found the boozy version of the popular soft drink apparently breaches the industry code by appealing to minors. I mean, come on, we are living in a nanny state, aren't we? Yeah, look, and I think that maybe some of the people that were in charge of marketing of Hard Solo had probably sunk about a six pack of those before they came up with <laughs> Hard. What is it? What's the new, the new phrase? Hard like, yeah, rated. No, I'm definitely going to. Um, I'm not going to order a hard rated when I go <laughs> to the pub. That's Doesn't for sure. sound but as good as Hard look, Solo, oh, got, does it? Yeah, exactly. Look, I think we've got better things and more important things to worry about. The fact that kids may potentially uh. want to drink, you know, uh, want to drink an, an alcoholic soda because I don't really well, think it. I don't really think they will because they won't even they, come they can't, they won't be available to them. They can't walk into a bottle shop and buy one anyway. But but look, I've gone and got my exactly. uh, collector's edition uh, version today. It'll be worth <laughs> a lot of money in the future, I hope. Jenna Clark, thank you so much for joining me tonight.